Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Battery Talk. Today is IRA round two, let the money flow. Uh, today we'll be talking about the IR, the recent FOA by the US government uh, towards the battery industry. Yeah, another $3.5 billion being added in to uh, mostly supply chain, but also other manufacturing in the US. This is added to the other $2.8 billion that they basically released last year at the same time, although now this is just the FOA. So um, we're going to see a lot of people applying frantically in these different categories to get funded uh, by next March. And, yeah. um, you know, leave, leave it to the U.S. government to uh, make everyone start applying for a project this big uh, between Thanksgiving and New Year's. But uh, it'll be OK. People can start in January and finish in March. Yeah. So this actually went kind of under the radar, I think, uh, recently. I think everybody was anticipating the FOA uh, to be out in August. And I think everybody prepped for August and then August it didn't occur. And then they said, oh, they'll push it to September. And everybody was joking about how that means the due date for everything would be like the first of the new year, which would be a very much a government fashion thing. And then it didn't occur. So here we are. I think people are just tired of waiting and they're just digging into it because Realistically, this next week's Thanksgiving, so most people are out, and then you got another three weeks of hard work effort before everybody's gone for Christmas. So, and the due date's a few weeks after the New Year's. Um, so this new one is is covering basically the first two main categories of uh, battery making. So basically, we're covering raw materials uh, processing or transformation of those raw materials into secondary materials such as like electrodes, and then uh, battery manufacturing as well. There's a quite a long list right now uh, in the page, but just kind of give you guys a, a quick summary. They're really targeting on uh, domestic production of lithium via that via brine or hard rock mining or direct lithium extraction. They're also throwing a little bit of money towards uh, non-lithium containing materials that are related to the battery. So you could think like sodium ion would be a, a tangential one. They're also bolstering a ton into uh, electrode making uh, that seems to be a big area of focus in this one and a lot of money going that way. And then they're also throwing a ton of money into the electrolyte side. Uh, you don't you don't see like graphite specifically called out and you don't see silicon specifically called out uh, in the areas of interest for this FOA. Uh, but I think that's because, you know, minus Amprius who gave their money back and Scylla who gave their money back. And uh, Microvast, which gave their money back. And Microvast. <laughs> there's there's no, you know, they've, they've hit the major silicon players. There aren't really other ones that are producing raw silicon minus group 14, right? Um, and then they go into a little bit on the manufacturing side, uh, mainly focusing on commercial production, uh, retrofitting or new facilities, and then also non-lithium containing chemistries for production uh, as well. You know, if you've watched our other videos recently, basically you've seen that we focused on, you know, lithium mining, finding, and recycling, and we focused uh, most recently on graphite and, and local supplies of graphite. So it's nice to see the focus in the money going towards lithium. It's it's kind of nice to see it going towards recovery of battery critical materials, non-lithium. We're a little worried about that. It should also include lithium. Um, and then hopefully they have a lot for graphite specifically as well. It, it, it's part of a larger bucket, so we'll see how much they actually fund towards graphite players as opposed to other stuff. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting, and, and get me if I'm wrong here, but one of the big areas here is commercial scale domestic production of uh, battery anodes, um, and that's a really broad category, right? That can be silicon, that could be graphite, I mean, technically, and that could be facility production for laminated lithium on copper, right? So... I agree with you. I think this is going to be slightly interesting on how it plays out on the graphite end because we don't exactly have a ton of graphite resources locally. And even the synthetic resources themselves are super energy intensive, which means there'd be a huge upcharge uh, just going that route for production. But I mean, there's money here to justify it. So if we break it down into the major categories by spending right now, um, if you are a battery material you're looking at about 2.1 billion of this total 3.5 billion going to it. And I'm lumping everything in here, like electrolytes, salts, I'm counting as materials, lithium, I'm counting as materials, um, other things such as like LFP, NMC, et cetera, all count as battery materials. The next largest pool is actually towards what I would call like transformation of those materials into other battery goods, which would be electrodes. So you have 800 million dedicated solely for anodes and cathodes. 
Um, and there's a certain amount of players that are going to be awarded this. I think, you know, min five, max eight uh, for most of these categories uh, in some distribution of that. And then finally, which I think this is a little weird, 400 million uh, solely to uh, manufacturing of batteries. And of that 400, 100 is to non-lithium containing chemistries. And then you have 200 million to like cans, mylar, tabs, tape, separator, so on and so forth. Basically non-active components of the battery. Yeah, so anyway, a lot of funding and in general looking for kind of two plus players each to be manufacturing it because nobody, even the US government, wants only a single source making anything that's going to be uh, critical. Um, w w one thing also we both think is really interesting is, you know, we, we covered the one last year with the 2.8 billion and a lot of the people that got it, uh, including, you know, Group 14 and Scylla, Applied Materials, uh, Microvast, Amprius and others. And, you know, a decent amount of investment in lithium that time as well. Only one silicon investment. And um, it really does highlight what was invested last time and, and a couple companies, including Amprius and Microvast, that had to kind of cancel their factories. And the, the spin always changes, whether it's the, the U.S. government, you know, denied them the funds during contract negotiation or whether they turned them down for freedom to operate the end result is they didn't get the money and the factories are no longer going to be built. And so just because you have been selected for these and you say that you're going to make get, get a factory out of it, doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen. It still has to actually work. And so um, it, re really excited to see kind of who gets these awards and then to see what actually comes out of it in terms of what's going to be announced versus executed on. Yeah, and I think it's it's kind of interesting, right? If you look at like some of the wording in the FOA, right? Like the march in rights, uh, where basically they're like, hey, if, if you get to this point of threshold in production of this really cool material and you got it to work, but it's not cost effective, if you stop producing it, we're, we're fully, you know, allowed to sell the rights to another party or license the rights to another party. So or that, just give it. Yeah. yeah. So I, mean, I think that's there. I also think it's interesting in this one because this just feels like IRA round one, the repeat. Um, and I, I think that's actually kind of a, a terrible thing. It One, it kind of just feels like, hey, we did this terribly the first time. Here's the second round of what we did the first time for the most part. And then two, the distribution of funding, I think, is is terribly lopsided. It's a very linear approach to the battery supply chain. Um, I think, you know, if the U.S.'s goal is to become domestic producers, right? They have to kind of go in parallel versus in series. And I think there's a lot of underestimating how hard it's going to be to scale the the factories, right? And, and one person could argue, well, you have to have the materials to scale the factory. And another person could argue, um, you know, well, okay, but then you're on a linear timeline where if it takes you 15 years to figure this portion out, it's going to take you another 15 years and you've spent 30 years. So you're just repeating what Asia did when they took 30 years to develop lithium ion. So I think it's, it's kind of a hard topic. Yeah. The, the, the one nice thing about it is, you know, th this specifically is really not putting much into the actual battery manufacturing, but there's been a lot of, you know, Chinese and Korean battery makers who have announced plants in the U S usually joint ventures with car companies. And so at the very least, there's those and they've all been getting separate DOE funding and they've all been getting separate like city, state, county, federal funds and tax rebates. So those are still going in and, and really a lot of these are going to be the materials to hopefully supply those that are U.S. made. But but again, we'll, we'll see how it all maps out. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting, right? Because like if you give somebody a foothold in any of those spots, right, like you're you're basically stuck, right? Like you could argue that like all these Chinese and Asian uh, like manufacturers are going to be developing the workforce locally for a given spot. But the reality is it's probably more going to be more segmented than we think. Like there's always, you know, companies have, when your process is like the special sauce, companies tend to not make it easy for engineers and stuff to have a view of the whole process. So everybody's kind of only got like one key to one part. Uh, so you might be giving them like technical skills on understanding how batteries are made, but you wouldn't be giving them like the understanding of what are the key manufacturing areas and the things to watch out for and that like punch list of like, are they doing this right?
anyway, a lot to look forward to and uh, be really interesting to see, you know, uh, who applies and who gets the grants and then who can execute and actually, uh, actually get the money. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you're right. Like it, it's going to be interesting. And I think to sum it up, right. We could say that, you know, this is round two of the government trying to get it right. You know, don't call it a comeback. Uh, and you know, they're clearly that's reinforced by the fact of here's all our money to materials again forget manufacturing and everything else we they didn't even talk about like pack integration or recycling or anything like that um so yeah uh time will tell but i i, I look forward to seeing who we can who wins so we can talk about it again and uh the next time you guys will probably see us will be in uh january presenting on the volta foundation battery report which is where most of our time is going to go between now and then yeah so don't expect any videos but please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, also, we got our Patreon account up, so if you want to donate to our caffeine addiction, we would much appreciate it.